In this lesson, we're going to cover the alternating series test and the alternating series error bound theorem. The tests for convergence or divergence that we have considered so far apply only to series with positive terms. In this section, we will learn how to determine convergence with series whose terms are not necessarily positive. An alternating series is a series whose terms alternate from positive to negative. So next, we're going to consider the series below. This first one says 1, then negative 1 half, then positive 1 third, negative 1 fourth, positive 1 fifth, and so on. For this series, you notice the first term is positive, the next one's negative, and then positive. So to indicate that algebraically, we have negative 1 to the n minus 1. When we take this 1 and you plug it in for n, you get 1 minus 1, or 0, and negative 1 to the 0 is 1. So it makes the first term positive. Then when you plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so negative 1 to the 1 makes it negative which again, this next term is negative. And then we have the formula right here, one over n, and that produces the one, the one half, the one third, one fourth. Similarly for this one, your terms go from negative to positive to negative to positive. And then you see it's one half, two thirds, three fourths, and so on. Since this first term is negative and the sigma starts at n equals one, we have negative one to the n, where you plug in the one, so negative one to the one makes this first term negative. When you plug in two, that would be negative one squared, so that would then be a positive term and the second term is positive. Next, I just want to point out in the numerator, it goes one, two, three, four, five, so that's why we just have an n. In the denominator, to get from this n equals one to two, or from two to three, you're taking n and adding one, so that's why it's n plus one in the denominator. So from these examples, we see the nth term of an alternating series is of the form a sub n equals negative one to the n minus one, and then b sub n is the formula over here, or it can be written as negative one to the n, where again, b sub n is the formula that doesn't have the alternating part to it. b sub n is gonna be a positive number, where b sub n is the absolute value of the entire expression a sub n. Then we have, if terms of an alternating series decrease towards zero in absolute value, then the series converges. So that leads us into our alternating series test. It says if the alternating series, and we have sigma, we have negative one to the n minus one of b sub n, equals b sub 1 minus b sub 2 plus b sub 3 and so on, where b sub n is positive because it's the non-alternating part. The series is going to satisfy these two conditions. We have b sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to b sub n for all n, and that means that the terms are decreasing. Then also we have the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n equals 0. If both of these are satisfied, then you can conclude that the series is convergent. And again, this is by the alternating series test. So here's a diagram that kind of represents this visually. We're starting at zero, and then b sub one is positive, so it gets you here for s sub one, where s sub one is the first partial sum. If b sub two is negative, you go to the left. Then if you add b sub one and negative b sub two, it gets you right here for your second partial sum. Then b sub three is positive, so it bounces to the right, and here would be your third partial sum. And then you guys can see that it's going back and forth. And then you can see that the total sum is right here, so the alternating series converges. This example says, test the series for convergence or divergence. Part A, we have the alternating harmonic series. So it starts one, then negative one half, then positive one third, negative one fourth. So the first step is we're gonna take this series and we're gonna write it in sigma form. The first term is positive, then the second term's negative. So we're gonna use the expression negative one to the n minus one. And just double check, when you take this one, plug it in, one minus one is zero, negative one to the zero is positive. When you plug in two, two minus one is one, negative one to the one is negative. And if you just focus in on the numbers without the negative and the positives, so you have one, one half, one third, one fourth, that can be described as one over n. And it kind of gives that hint because it said harmonic series. And I just wrote that over here where b sub n equals one over n. Again, it's the non-alternating part. So according to the alternating series test, the first condition we want to check is whether or not b sub n is decreasing. So again, b sub n is one over n, so that's one, then one half, one third, one fourth, and we can see that those terms are decreasing. They're getting smaller. So I just made a note that b sub n is decreasing. Okay, the next thing we check is we take the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n. As n gets larger and larger, this fraction is gonna get closer and closer to zero. So the second condition is satisfied. So since these two conditions are satisfied, I wrote therefore by the alternating series test, and then I put in parentheses AST to abbreviate for future problems. The original series one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth dot 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 is convergent. Part B, we have the series negative one third plus two fourths minus three fifths plus four sixths dot dot dot. So first step is we're gonna rewrite this in sigma notation. 
The first term is negative, so that means we just write negative 1 to the n. And then next we're looking at just the values 1 3rd, 2 fourths, 3 fifths, 4 sixths, and so on. And then we want to look at these values 1 3rd, 2 fourths, 3 fifths, 4 sixths. On top it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's just going to be n. In the denominator it goes 3, 4, 5, 6. So the relationship between this n to here is we're taking n and adding 2. Right here, if you have n is 2, and then you add 2, you get 4 n is 3, you add 2, you get 5. So here we have n on top, and then in the denominator we have n plus 2. And I just wrote b sub n equals n over n plus 2. So next we need to look at these terms, b sub n, and identify whether or not they're decreasing. So if you look, you have 1 3rd, 2 fourths, 3 fifths, 4 sixths, and 5 sevenths. So b sub n is not decreasing. So since b sub n does not decrease, one of the two conditions isn't satisfied in order to apply the alternating series test. So I wrote, therefore, the alternating series test does not apply. When this happens, what we're going to do is we're going to then look at the test for divergence. So when we do the test for divergence, we're taking the limit of negative 1 to the n times n over n plus 2. So since these terms do not decrease, they get bigger. Again, when n gets larger and the terms get larger, but they're alternating from positive to negative to positive negative, you can see that the limit of these terms does not exist. So again, since the limit does not exist, by the test for divergence, the original series right here is divergent. So for part c, we have our series right here. It's alternating. You have negative 1 to the n minus 1. And then here's your b sub n. So first we check whether or not b sub n is decreasing. So I wrote b sub n is decreasing question mark because just looking at this off the top of my head, I'm not quite sure. So we could plug this into a calculator and as n gets larger and larger, we can identify whether or not the terms are getting smaller or getting larger. Or we can also take the derivative of this and then check whether that expression is negative. So I want to go ahead and do that. In order to take the derivative of this, we're going to use the quotient rule. So I wrote it out. We have low and then d high is 1 over n minus high and then d low and then all over low squared. Okay, so this simplifies and we get 1 minus natural log of n all over n squared. So looking at this expression, the denominator will always be positive, but if you look at the numerator, so when we have 1 minus natural log of n, as n gets larger, the height of the graph is going to be greater than 1, so 1 minus a number greater than that will be negative. So this expression is going to be less than 0. And remember, when your first derivative is negative, that means the function is decreasing. So I wrote, therefore, as n gets larger, b sub n is decreasing. All right, we're ready to check the second condition. So that's taking the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n. And you might be noticing that the natural log graph as n gets larger goes to infinity. And then also the graph of n, which is just x, also grows without bound when x gets larger and larger. So the limit of the numerator equals infinity. The limit of the denominator also equals infinity. So since this is of indeterminate form, positive infinity over infinity, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so we have a lot going on in this one little problem. Uh, to apply L'Hopital's rule, remember you're taking the derivative of the numerator, and then you're also taking the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of ln of n is 1 over n, and the derivative of n is 1. So now the limit as n gets larger and larger of 1 over n equals 0. Therefore, by the alternating series test, the series is convergent. For part d, we have the series negative 1 to the n cosine of pi over n. And then I wrote where b sub n equals cosine of pi over n. So first we want to check whether or not b sub n decreases. So what we're considering is as n gets larger and larger, the inside function pi over n is going to go to 0. So since the pi over n is going to approach 0, that means cosine of 0 is going to approach the height of 1. So I wrote, therefore, cosine of pi over n approaches 1. So b sub n is not decreasing. So the first condition of the alternating series test is not met. Even though this is the case, I still want to look at the limit of b sub n. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n, or cosine of pi over n. And you'll notice this is a composition of functions. So we're going to pull this cosine to the outside, and then we're going to take the limit of the inside function. So the limit as n goes to infinity of pi over n is going to go to 0. So we get cosine of 0, which equals 1. And 1 doesn't equal 0. So therefore, the alternating series test does not apply. So what we're going to do next is we're going to check the test for divergence. So for the test for divergence, we're going to take the limit of this entire expression up here. Since we already identified that as n gets larger and larger, pi over n is going to go to 0, and then cosine of 0 is going to approach a height of 1, this limit, because of this alternating part, is going to oscillate between 1 and negative 1. 
So that means that the limit does not exist. So therefore, by the test for divergence, the original series is divergent. Next, we have the alternating series error bound theorem. It says if s equals, and then we have our alternating series, where b sub n is positive, is the sum of an alternating series that satisfies the two conditions where b sub n is decreasing and the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n equals zero, then we can conclude that the alternating series error bound is given by the absolute value of r sub n, which equals the absolute value of the total sum of the original series minus the nth partial sum, and this is less than or equal to b sub n plus one where b sub n plus one is the next term of the alternating series. This example says consider the series and we have negative one to the n minus one all over n cubed. Part a says show that the series converges, then using a calculator calculate the 10th partial sum. So I just wrote down that b sub n equals one over n cubed. So the first thing we wanna note is that as you plug in one, then two, then three, then four, you can see that these terms decrease. All right, next we wanna take the limit of b sub n and the limit as n gets larger and larger of one over n cubed is gonna to go to zero. So we have by the alternating series test, the series converges. So to find the 10th partial sum, we're finding s sub 10. So our sigma starts at one and goes to 10 of our formula. And I'm gonna plug this right into the calculator. So we get 0 0.901. Part B says estimate the error in using the 10th partial sum to approximate the total sum. So remember, this is just the sum of the first 10 terms of this alternating series, and that sum equals 0 0.901. So next, we're gonna estimate the error if we were to use this value to approximate the total sum. So again, we just calculated the 10th partial sum where n equals 10. So we're gonna calculate the error that goes with that. So that's gonna be r sub 10 equals, and then we have s minus s sub 10, and that's less than or equal to b sub 11. So again, we're gonna look at the next term of the alternating series, which is b sub 11. So I wrote that out. We have the absolute value of r sub 10, which equals the absolute value of the total sum s minus the 10th partial sum. And this error is gonna be less than or equal to b sub 11, where again, b sub 11 represents the next term. So our error is gonna be less than or equal to b sub 11, where b sub 11, we take 11 and plug it in for n right here. So we have one over 11 cubed. So by using the 10th partial sum to estimate the total sum, the error would be at most 0 0.000751. This example says consider the convergent series and we have negative one to the n minus one times three, all divided by two to the n times n plus one. Find s sub six or the sixth partial sum and use the alternating series error bound theorem to show that this value differs from the total sum s by less than three over 1000. So again, we're already given that this series converges, so we're gonna find s sub six. So remember what that means is we're taking one for n and plugging it in, then we take two for n and plug it in, and then plug in three for n, four for n, then five and then six, and then we add them all up. And again, you can also do that on the calculator. So you press math and then the number zero, and then it'll bring up sigma, so you can plug in n as one to six, and then you plug in this formula, you get 0.565. So next we're gonna set up the alternating series error bound. Guys, I'm in San Diego and the storm is crazy. Can you hear the hail? Oh my gosh. Okay, I might have to hit pause and start recording later because this is so loud. Let's see, can I catch any hail? Yes, I'm trying to record a calc video at night and there's hail on the ground. And it's making so much noise. Okay, so I set this up. We have r sub six equals the total sum minus the sixth partial sum. And this is less than or equal to b sub seven. So we take seven and plug it in for n up here to the non-alternating part. So we plug in seven for n here and right here. So I wrote that down. So we have three over two to the seventh times the quantity seven plus one. And this equals three over 1,024. And this fraction is less than three over 1,000 because on this side we're dividing by more. So it checked out. This example says the given series is convergent. How many terms of the series are necessary in order to estimate the sum to the indicated accuracy? So we have our sigma is negative one to the n plus one over n to the fourth, and it says that our error is gonna be less than 0 0.001. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start plugging in one for n, then we're gonna plug in two for n, then three for n, and so on. So first I showed one, two, three, four, five, that's n, and then I have the fractions when you plug in two for n, then three for n, and so on. Next, I'm gonna calculate the decimals. 
So when you have all the decimals written out, you can see that 0 0.001 lies right here between 0 0.0016 and 0 0.0007. So the problem says how many terms of the series are necessary in order to estimate the sum to this accuracy. Since the error is less than 0 0.001, that means we take the series out only to five terms. So I wrote five terms. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the like button. I appreciate it.